Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Mario and welcome back to another Cinema 4D tutorial. So this time I would like to talk about topology a bit and general modeling struggles if you're just beginning with modeling. And so what I mean by that, for example, the transition between, let's say, this type of object into subdivision surface type of object where you actually need to take care of uh, the edges, the edge flow, supportive edges and so on. And so basically I would like to talk about that a bit right here. So I'm going to begin simply with uh, one cube and I will put another one right here and just put it as a child. So when it's subdivided, both of them are subdivided at the same time. So we have two of the same objects. And right now, uh, when subdivision is active, they're subdividing exactly the same. Uh, but depending on how we add edges to the object, or this one or this one, they will look quite differently. So basically what I'm trying to say is we'll try to keep this one a circle and this one we'll try to make as a uh, cube so that basically get our shape back but here that we maintain more of a circular shape so this is where the real uh, thing begins so if you're working on your project and you're satisfied with the base shape the base block out and now you need to come and apply subdivision and additional edges this is where you where it can be a bit tricky, but really, in essence, it's really, really simple. So uh, in order to keep this a circle, what we need to do here is minimize the number of edges along this area. So basically, when it's subdivided, subdivided like this, because we don't have so many edges around this loop. So if I would start to add edges here, you would see that the shape changes. But what I would like to do is maintain this area and keep this area a bit sharper. So when it subdivides, basically that uh, this is not so flat, but it's more pushed outwards. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can do extrude inner. Let's say like that, so that these edges right here share only one edge which is this one to uh, inside surface. So when it's subdivided, then we get something like that. And what that allows us is a particular edge flow. So as you can notice, we have an edge flow that flows in this direction. And when we float over this surface, we have edge flow that flows over this surface. So we can now start adding something here and creating additional details let's say like something like that and let me just increase the number of subdivisions so we can start to get shape like that so because uh, our edge flow allows us to do details like that so let's take a look into the another example where we need to do a different set of edge flow so let me just put this in in wireframe mode so that we can see uh, so in order to make this a cube what i need to do is if you remember we talked about before the closer two edges are to one another the sharper that area becomes so if i now come here and apply one edge loop here you will see that that area will sharpen up and let's do the same thing here here and here so this will uh, convert our original subdivision into a cubic object again and then again just quick note i want to mention that you can also do symmetrical cuts and it's gonna go much faster so as you can notice even though that these two objects when subdivided they form the same shape but depending on the edge flow that you apply to a particular object you can actually change it change their shapes uh, when applying subdivisions so this is something to to keep in mind also what i would like to mention is uh, a few other things that might be common uh, struggles so i'm gonna make this editable like that select all and let's 
scale it. Actually, I can scale it maybe in this way. So we have something like that. And again, I'm going to use symmetrical cuts to do two cuts like that. And let's move this aside. So again, I will just put this as a child here. And okay, so let's take a look. What what commonly can happen also if you let's say want to add a detail to this object and you want to do an extrusion, so you would do extrusion like that. Uh, on the first glance, that might look just fine because you are getting there where you want to. You you want to have this detail here. But when you would come and subdivide that, you would again get a problem where you would be like, okay, something is off. And again, we come to the point where depending on how and where do we add edges, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get our object straight. So I'm going to put symmetrical cut for now, let's say here. So by adding these edges, I made a supportive uh, edge around... Uh, next to actually this main, uh, let me try and select. So by adding these edges, I added the support to this edge so that they're not collapsing to one another. And again, we come to that, the closer two edges are together, uh, the the stable that object, the more stable that object becomes and the more sharper that area becomes. So. By that principle, let's now add an edge right here, so that will sharpen it up. Let's do the same thing here, same thing here. So I want to have the same sharp edge that I have down here, I want to have here up. And if I try, I actually cannot add this edge along this area. So it will need to go this way, which creates a totally different edge flow. It creates... Uh, it creates sort of a that sharp edge, but actually it's not creating it in a way that I want to. It's ha it has totally different edge flow. It's flowing throughout the detail while I want to have flow like this. And since I added that detail, so we'll go way back. So since I added this detail directly next to these main edges, that's what's causing the problem. Uh, you can always correct that, of course. So you can do your edges manually. So you would do he here a cut and you would go all the way there. And then what you can do is just uh, go to stitch and sew and stitch it. But then again, you have a problem here. So it's a lot of fixing. So instead, before you go and create any details like that, so I'm just gonna do it again, just for the comparison's sake. And let's bring those cuts back. And let's put one here. So on this cube, okay, did I, okay. Uh, let's go here. So here, let's do a few things first. So in first example, I showed you that we determined what we want to have from that shape. So either do we want to keep it circular uh, or either do we want to keep it cubic here. I would like to keep it cubic. So I would apply my supportive edges first to maintain that shape that actually I want to keep before I uh, move on to do any details. So now that I actually have these edges, now I can go here and create this detail and then I can add, let's say just quick, okay, I didn't do extrusion. So let's push it inwards and I'll just add a few edges here. And when we compare these two, the noticeable difference is that we have here much more room than we actually have here. 
And this is something that I would typically like to avoid. So whenever you're working on something, just make sure that you have enough room to work with so that you have your detailing like nested between all the supportive edges. Because if your detail is right next to uh, the structural edge there, you might have a problem and a lot of fixing. So let me show you another example really quick what I mean by adding a bit more uh, working space to our model. So let me make it editable, just optimize it real quick. And I think I did cover something similar already in one of my Kitbash videos, but I just wanna mention it again, just in case. So in case, for example, you would like to get a shape like this, uh, what you might do instead is just push it out instead of extrusion. Uh, and then you can delete everything here and then do proper edges. But in case you do want to do extrusion and you want to do, let's say, details in this area, what you do not want to do is probably directly go into extrusion. And what you might want to do is add a bit more edges to that. And even also what I like to do is uh, what I did here. Okay. Uh, again, when we talked about a bit more space to work, you can also add yourself a bit more uh, edges in this direction. So when you subdivide it here, or even when you add more edges here, it's going to look a bit more friendly. So uh, when it's subdivided, it currently looks like that. But again, if we add a few supportive edges here, and of course we need one here as well it's gonna look um, much much different and again now it depends this area and edges how close those edges are together you want to set them let's say here and also one other thing that i would like to note uh, mention that you, you probably want to set the edges uh in okay so what i'm trying to say here is how do you know the proper uh, distance from your edges so that they're beveled properly so when subdivided you do not want to put them too close because when you try to look at this object from a distance that it simply doesn't look way too sharp so basically that it has a bit of beveling in between so when working with edges just make them a bit more apart like that so that even when they look when you're looking at them from the distance that they have that beveling to them. Uh, I would like to show you one more example where I have one, again, basic, simple object, and depending on the edges and how the edge flows, we'll get to different results. So I'm gonna again share real quick. Let's go to the edge mode. So here you can see how those edges look like, and these are the edges that are making the shape, basically. So. Uh, they're closing on itself, I would say, so kind of having that circular flow here as well. While in this case, if I hover to the edges, you will see that they have more horizontal shape and that these edges are actually forming, these edges are forming this shape. So again, just as a final note, so you might have your base mesh, base model, block out, whatever set up, but depending on how you decide to work with your edges, you will get different results from there. So just something to take note of. Uh, so finally, I hope that this was hopeful enough. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. Also, if you'd like to add something or you think that I missed something, I can easily do an update video, so no problem there. And again, I uh, just would like to thank you for watching and see you next time.